Hello and welcome back to The Vacant Light. Today I'm back with another video review. I'm covering a split album, uh, which contains music from the bands Ebon and Illumini and Worms of Sabnock. Now, I became familiar with this band, particularly Worms of Sabnock, because the band shares a member with Talmus. In particular, their bass player, who also does some, some of their vocal work, is actually the lead singer and frontman from Talmus, uh, whose name is Hal Sinden. So as a result of that, I became familiar with this band. Uh, and then picked up the split album. Uh, this particular album is my first access to both Evan Illumini's music and music from Worms of Sabnock. So it was quite an interesting and intriguing listen for me altogether. What I'd like to say that's interesting before getting really into the, the beef of this review is that uh, the actual two halves of this album have individual names. Evan Illumini's is called Estuarine and Worms of Sabnock's is called Grand Religious Finale. As you can see, uh, each of the two bands has their own distinct cover art, uh, which I find quite unique. I find that on split albums, very often the bands just use their band name as the title of their half and don't really uh, you know, add any unique spin to the, the artwork or the titles or anything like that. So let's move on to the music now, starting with Evan Illumini. Now both of the bands on this release uh, have some influence from black metal and also progressive uh, rock and progressive metal. And although they have that similarity, I found that there's a good diversity between the two halves of this album. In particular, Evan Illumini focuses more on the progressive side of things, with a sprinkling of black metal influence here and there. Uh, in particular, uh, many people label this band as uh, something called post-black metal, but it, it's not really a subgenre I'm familiar with. And I don't really care much about labels, so let's just talk about the music. The first thing you'll probably notice on Evan Illumini's half is that there's a really big focus on clean female vocals. And these vocals are quite well done. They range from moderate styles into more operatic, sort of high-pitched sounds. And they never really sound too over the top and fit in quite well with the music. There's also some uh, inclusion of clean male vocals and also a little bit of the black metal vocal style. But for the most part, the progressive vocals uh, on the female side of things uh, take up most of the time in the vocal department here. Now, usually at this point in the review, I go from vocals and start talking about the guitar, bass, and drumming, you know, the standard in instrumentation. But I really feel like an exception needs to be made for Ebon Illumini because their keyboard and synth playing is really very vital to the music and really ties in the most closely to the vocal work. I found that each song that they put on their half of the album has a different feel and a lot of that atmosphere comes from the keyboard and synth effects. Now in particular I found that they're not overbearing, uh, they're very well diversified which makes them actually quite hard to describe uh, but they fit in quite well to the different themes of each song. In particular the track Air uh, which is the fourth track on here was a real highlight for me because you can hear for quite a, a lot of the song the wind whistling around you as a listener, sort of that atmosphere you get from it. And different effects are used to that same extent on the other songs on the first half of the album. So the keyboards were really a big focus for me as a listener. Now moving on to the guitar work, I found that Abbott and Lumini's guitar work was fairly clean sounding. Uh, it fits in well with the, the sort of operatic vocals and has a nice uh, clean echo or ring to it. Even in the more aggressive parts, I don't feel that the band really went overboard with uh, the distortion or the aggression in terms of just the raw sound of the music, and I feel that the um, just the sound has a nice uh, nice feel to it overall. It's a little bit jazzy at parts as well, which which is quite interesting in this context. The bass playing I found uh, to be actually quite warm, and it's very audible here. You know how much I hate uh, non-audible bass, but it's warm. It comes through the mix, and it adds a lot to things. Um, it just has a great sound that fits in well with the themes and concepts. And lastly, the drumming is very well done. For the most part, pretty laid back. Um, the slower moments focus more just on the, the bass and snare, but, uh, or sorry, more so the bass and cymbal actually, but the snare and toms actually come through uh, quite well in the more aggressive parts. And it never sounds like they're just trying to, you know, pull off blast beats or anything of, of that nature. It feels that the, uh, that the music's tasteful at all times, and it's well-paced to what's actually going on. So overall, Ebon Illumini is a nice surprise for me, and I'm not a, a person who's particularly familiar with progressive styles of music. I more so um, have become familiar with them due to 
inclusion of uh, progressive styles and other kinds of music I enjoy, such as in uh, sludge metal, doom metal, and so on. But this was a nice, uh, nice clean lesson for me, and I really did enjoy it, even though it's not uh, very well tuned to black metal styles in terms of uh, the proportion of the music on here. Now, let's move forward to Worms of Sabnock. Now, Worms of Sabnock, compared to Ebon Illumini, focus more on a traditional style of black metal, although you can still hear those different influences, in particular from progressive styles and uh, here and there a bit of a doom metal influence as well, which is not too surprising because um, Halcinden is uh, kind of a in the sort of uh, vein of doom metal in other projects such as Talonus. Now, the vocals here really do focus more on the male uh, black metal sound. Uh, they're fairly well done, and I feel that they do fit in well with the band is trying to do here. I'd like to hear them make them sound a little bit bigger in the mix, though. Uh, make them come through a little bit more. Uh, that's that's one thing that I noticed could have been uh, maybe produced a little bit better. But overall, they're not they're not bad. There's a decent uh, range to them, and it feels like they're kind of in a sweet spot where they're kind of high pitched, but there's still a nice guttural feel to them, and they don't sound overly shrieky or uh, just trying to be super aggressive. In addition to that, there is some nice inclusion of female vocals, though obviously not to the same extent as Evan Illumini. In particular, the song, I believe it is uh, Demonic of Womankind, has a nice focus on those uh, more operatic again styled uh, female vocals. The guitar work on here is pretty aggressive. It's a little more distorted than Evan Illumini's half. Uh, it focuses on a, a more of an even mixture of the aggressive and the laid back parts. One thing I found interesting in particular on my, uh, probably my favorite track off the second half, which is Our Meadows Burn in Blackness, I can really hear a little bit more of a doomy, sludgy kind of laid back yet, uh, depressive vibe coming through the guitar work, which I found quite interesting and really added another stylistic element to this very rich, um, split album here. Now, in addition to that, as opposed to Ebon Illumini, who kind of more or less focused on one guitar track, there's a good amount of uh, guitar double tracking here on the Worms of Sabnock half, and I really felt that at a lot of times uh, it wasn't the traditional like rhythm and lead kind of double tracking. There were a lot of uh, melodies and counter melodies going on in the guitars, uh, dual uh, lead parts, which I found to be uh, fairly technical and well done without getting too overly crazy or technical. And also the solos were pretty well done without being overly flashy, and they fit into a kind of doomy black metal style uh, fairly well, even though black metal is not known for its guitar solos in particular. Uh, the bass playing on this half is not as audible as on the first half of the album. I found that it blended in more, and instead of a warm sound, uh, I found that Worms of Sabnock went for a more aggressive kind of thumpy vibe. And I did enjoy the bass playing, although I wish I could have heard it a little bit more. And lastly, the drumming. Uh, was fairly aggressive for the most part. Uh, there's some pretty good fills in here, and just uh, a lot, lot of aggression uh, overall. It fit in quite well with the guitar parts, and I really had no grips with the drumming. I found it to be one of the more enjoyable aspects of Worms of Sabnock's music here. So overall, Worms of Sabnock is a uh, a pretty interesting black metal band that kind of has a, a really heavy chunk of progression in their music. And it's sort of more of an even split between those styles than I found Ebon Illumini's music had. Though neither half of this album was uh, bad in any way, really. Although I'd like to say that I'd like to hear um, Worms of Sabnock sort of develop their sounds a little bit more and experiment a little more with, with those progressive styles. I did find that I enjoyed uh, Worms of Sabnock's more progressive tracks, in particular uh, tracks uh, Our Metals Burn Blackness and Demonic of Womankind a little bit more than their traditional black metal stuff. Uh, so that's just something to think about, and it'd be interesting to see where the band goes from here. Overall, i definitely recommend this split album here uh, to anyone who's a fan of uh, a variety of styles in their music. To people who are interested in um, more modern sounding styles of black metal, or who are into uh, progressive metal altogether. Um, so thanks a lot for watching this video, and do support these bands. These bands are not very well known and they deserve more attention than they're getting right now. So thanks a lot and have a good one. Goodbye.